Well, I can't think of any better guest to kick off our weekly short track focus than the ninth. <laughs> well, I can't think of any better guest to kick off our weekly short track focus than the Advance Auto Parts NASCAR national champion for 2020, Josh Berry. Sounds pretty good there, champ, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. We had a unbelievable year. Like I said, it's been very special to be a part of. And like I said, just very thankful. You know, people, I don't think maybe if they're fans of the Cup Series or even the Truck Series or where you're going to get a shot uh, this year with Junior Motorsports in 2021 uh, in the Xfinity Series, just what life as a short tracker is all about. I mean, you're talking about running 60, 70, 80 races a year all over the United States. How do you how do you square that with having a family life? You know, it's been um, a little bit of a challenge. Like this year, typically we don't race, but probably 18 or 20 nights. Um, you know, this with it going after the national championship deal, that's really kind of why we've never really been able to schedule and make that work. Um, it's just a huge commitment from all our people and financially. So really this year presented a unique opportunity with uh, just a shorter season due to the COVID, <laughs> due to the COVID shutdown and everything. And, uh, you know, that allowed us to do a lot of racing in two or three months. And, yeah, you know, it's tough to be away from home that much. Um, you know, we definitely, I felt like we race a lot, but, you know, maybe we didn't race as much as they did back in the old days. You know, there's just not as many options, but there was a lot of weeks we raced, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and uh, that's still a lot of, a lot of time away. And, um, you know, it's definitely uh, tough to make happen, but, you know, it's just what we love to do. All right. So you chase for a national championship with advanced auto parts and under the NASCAR sanction and, and you pull it off. Now let, let's compare you to maybe some of your peers that you raced against having uh, junior motorsports behind you <laughs> is has got to maybe give you what they call a little bit of an unfair advantage. What say you? Um, I don't know. I mean, I think I've definitely had a great opportunity. Um, you know, it's, everyone's always going to say that, you know, I've been, I've been used to that, but, you know, I think we operate on a pretty fair basis, you know, compared to, compared to a lot of the people we race with. Um, you know, I think anybody that really knows how our program works realizes that, you know, we're in our own building on our own. You know, we buy cars from people just like uh, we buy cars from Jay Hedgecock and people around here, just like everybody else does. Um, you know, we're, we're not in the Xfinity shop. We're kind of on our own deal. So um, it's definitely an advantage having, having that, but really, um, you know, I think where our, our big advantage is just people, you know, we're able to have a couple employees, including myself and, you know, having great people around you makes, makes things go a lot smoother. You know, I, I've said this all the time and being a short tracker myself being brought up in it, um, it, it, short track racing exudes a passion that maybe once you make it to the highest of levels, it's still there, but it isn't burning as brightly to the individuals. And I'm talking about whether it's your crew members or your, you, you know, your, your family, or even the race fans. Uh, if, if you had to talk to a, a, a cup fan that had never been to a short track, how would you describe that passion? And it's just, it's like a electric atmosphere. I feel like a lot of these places, um, you know, we've, we've raced all over, um, you know, North Carolina, Virginia, and I grew up racing in Nashville, um, at the fairground speedway. That's where I grew up racing. And I remember watching, watching so many races there and just how great, great the racing was. And it's just a, you know, it's just an amazing experience. I think people don't realize how good the racing is on at all these local short tracks and in all the divisions. Um, you know, the, I think that's, that's the one thing that I think NASCAR, you know, really needs to continue to, you know, help out as these short tracks, get, get more money involved and, and just make it easier for us to race, get more cars out there and hopefully more fans. Cause I think that's, that's really where it all starts is, you know, that's what the, they've always talked about when it comes to this weekly series, this is where it all starts. So, you know, I would uh, love to see, see it continue to succeed and grow. Well, with the uh, announcement that advance is going to uh, 
be taking care of the home tracks and the weekly operations, and it's all going to come under their banner. There's an awful lot of plans uh, that I think, uh, quite humbly, will will accomplish a little bit of what both you and I hope to see to to maybe put the focus in the spotlight on short trackers. Look, it goes without saying you're, you're tough behind the wheel, but you don't take any guff from anybody either. Uh, I don't want to call it a suspension, but one of the things that happens in short track racing is a, and the late Teddy Christopher coined this phrase. If you want to make friends, go to summer camp. You've had a couple of uh, kerfuffles <laughs> with guys, haven't you? Yeah. A couple here and there. Um, you know, it was kind of a, this year kind of, that was a, that happened in June this year. We had a incident in the, the, the car store deal that we've been running and, and it didn't result in a suspension, <laughs> but, uh, you know, um, you know, that's, that's just part of racing sometimes, you know I mean? You see it, um, it's a fine line of, of standing up for yourself and, you know, you're, you're in representing, you know, in my case, I mean, I'm representing junior motorsports, all things automotive, I racing, you know, a bunch of people. I mean, it's a fine line when you, yeah. when it, things come to that, but, you know, I think thankfully for me, I've got a lot of, people surrounding me that are racers and understand where I'm coming from and understand that, you know, sometimes you just kind of got to handle things yourself. If it's not working out like you think it should, and you sometimes you just kind of, kind of put your foot down and uh, uh, handle it yourself. I think you say you don't ever want to see it come to that, but ultimately that's what uh, puts fans in the stands and <laughs> all these local short tracks. So, well, well at least it. you're not racing a modified at uh, <laughs> Bowman gray stadium. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they coined the phrase madhouse continue our conversation here with Josh Berry, who is the NASCAR advanced auto parts weekly series national champion. Um, before we went to break, uh, I played a, a little snippet from Dale, Earnhardt Jr. when you were on his on his podcast and he paid some pretty heady tribute to you saying that you have risen to just a handful of individuals by winning this national title when, when he laid that on you how did it make you feel man it was uh it was it was really unex kind of unexpected and just uh yeah, really, I felt like in that moment, I remember I, I reached out to him after that because in that moment, I felt like I was just kind of soaking everything in. I really didn't say a lot. I was just kind of listening to him talk. And and I really, I felt bad a little bit afterwards because I, I reached out to him and told, you know, told him like just how much that really meant to me to hear because, um, you know, he gave me a huge opportunity and, and changed my life by bringing me over here and giving me the opportunity to drive these cars. I mean, I I didn't, I'm not a funded driver. I didn't, you know, come and bring fund into this deal. I mean, I've, I've got an opportunity and I've worked, worked for it and worked myself into opportunity that that's really changed my life. And that was all due to him just giving me an opportunity. So for him to say that, how much it meant for him to see the things we've accomplished and, and how it made it worth it to him that to go through this process with me and, and bring me in and, and uh, support me, you know, and basically just give me this opportunity to see how much it, it meant to him really. I mean, it, I really had to sit there and soak it in and listen to it because it was, uh, I mean, it was big. I mean, and then that, you know, even leaving there and then um, two days later that the whole Xfinity deal, they kind of lay that on me. I mean, it was just a, just an amazing week, really. Yeah, Christmas came early for the Barry household, no <laughs> yeah. question. All right, uh, uh, inquiring minds want to know, how in the hell does a bank teller become a national champion in NASCAR. <laughs> yeah. So, um, that was funny when I was in high school, uh, you know, I just had, I had a couple of business classes and, you know, we did had a class where you basically, you didn't, your last, you didn't have a last class and so you could go work and, you know, yada, yada, yada. So, um, the school, the lady that I, one of my teachers took me up with this job at a bank doing, doing that stuff. And, um, you know, I was, I was uh, still in high school doing that. And, you know, it was fun. It was a different experience for me. I grew up, my dad owned a restaurant, like a mom and pops uh, type restaurant, uh, small deal. And I, where I grew up kind of, you know, naturally when I was 15 or 16, I kind of just started working there doing things. And so the bank, that bank job was, um, it was an adjustment for me for sure. But 
you know, I learned a lot of, learned a lot of life lessons, you know, so doing stuff like that, just, just experiencing it. And, um, but yeah, so I was, uh, that's what actually was my job whenever me and Dale kind of put this deal together that, you know, involved me ultimately, um, you know, I was, I was going back and forth between, uh, Mooresville, North Carolina, and, and I'm from right outside of Nashville, Tennessee. So I was kind of going back and forth racing some. And then I think the summer, you know, the summer of, um, 2010, I quit my job and moved out here and went, went to work at the Xfinity shop. So it was quite, quite a change. I went from a restaurant to a bank, to a race team. So it's been, it was quite a, quite a change there. Yeah. Bussing tables, cash and checks. Yeah. And now you get to cash your own checks <laughs> when you race each and every week. So you, know, you alluded to the fact that, or I did that, you know, in 2021, you're going to get a pretty good opportunity driving for junior motorsports in what most people feel could be one of the first chairs in Xfinity competition, having worked in the Xfinity shop and knowing the quality of those teams. Um, how excited are you for the opportunity, but more importantly, and honestly, um, what do you set as the expectations? Because super competitors like you, uh, you want to go out and win right out of the box because that's what made you a national champion. Well, now you're in a little different pond, Mr. Fishy. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, first off, yeah, I'm, ex I'm extremely excited for it. Um, I've got, I've got a couple opportunities, um, over the years here, or there with them. And, you know, this is the first real opportunity that I'm going to have, you know, kind of a back to back, it looks like I'm going to have about 12 races kind of all in a row, really, um, over the course of a couple months. And, you know, I've never had that before. I've ran, you know, the most races I've ran for them in a year has been two and each time they were months apart. So it was kind of in a way, um, although I, I had some experience, I felt like it was almost uh, starting from scratch kind of each time. I mean, there was just so much, so much to learn. Well, I think this is a this is a huge deal for me, even though they're all right in a row. Um, to be able to build on it week to week with a team and a, and a crew chief and um, be able to start that is, that is huge. Um, as for the expectations, man, I really don't know. Um, I really don't. Um, yeah. I think I've held my own pretty well in my previous starts. Uh, you know, there's the competition's a little bit different now. The cars are different. Um, so I know, and I know with, a, you know, with all my uh, races being early on, the cup drivers are going to be in those races. Some, some of them are. So, I mean, I think that's going to kind of change it. I think, um, and I'm going to a lot of new tracks really. Uh, yeah. You know, I mean, it looks like I'm going to be going to, going to Daytona for the first time. I mean, you're talking, you know, so really each race is going to have kind of different expectations. I feel like, um, you know, for me to go to like a Daytona, for example, or a Talladega, I think, I mean, realistically, my goal is going to be to stay out of trouble. Um, Cause if you do that most of the time in those races, you, you finish well. I mean, I think that's a realistic goal for me. Um, but when we start going to places like Martinsville and Phoenix short tracks that I'm, you know, accustomed to running, I mean, I think top five is going to be the goal, you know, maybe better, you know, just depending on how we run. Um, so it's going to be kind of a moving target. I feel like, um, but I definitely feel like that I've got a good team behind me and a good opportunity and, you know, we're just going to kind of just see where it goes. And, you know, hopefully our, after the first few races, our expectations change to running for wins. I mean, that's, that's ultimately, but I think it's going to be hard to say, come out the gate right there, compete for wins right away. You know, talking to you, and I think our listeners would say the same thing. Josh Berry's a very humble individual and is awfully thankful for the opportunities that he's received. Could you describe for me who Josh Berry is when he straps himself into that race car and puts on that full face helmet? <laughs> you know, I don't know. I mean, like I said, I definitely have, have been trying to be humble and enjoy the, enjoy these moments. Um, you know, me and my wife had this conversation this week, really, we were talking about kind of the schedule and all this stuff. And we just talked about how we really want to, you know, enjoy the season, enjoy these races at the beginning of the year. Cause I mean, really nothing's guaranteed past that. And, uh, I don't know. I, it's hard to say how, uh, how I am when I strap my helmet on, you know, <laughs> I feel like I'm pretty level headed. I really don't say a lot. I don't get riled up. I, my, my highs are never too high and, and my lows are never too low. I feel like I'm, I'm pretty. And I think that's an advantage to me. I think I'm never really, seem to get too wound up, especially behind the, behind the 
um, seed and, and, you know, I don't know. That's a, I feel like that question is more for all the people that work for me, but, um, you know, they, they, uh, it's hard to say, but, you know, I'm typically pretty, uh, pretty clean. I don't, you know, I mean, we, we race hard, but I'm never really, I never really seem to find myself in too much trouble and always seem to finish. So, um, I think that's going to be a good when we start running those extended races. Well, listen, Josh, it's been a real treat to get to know you. It's been uh, really a pleasure to have you in the wind tunnel. Uh, 2021 looks great for you and Junior Motorsports, and we wish you nothing but the very best, champion. Yeah, thank you, man. Thank you for having me on. I enjoyed it. Thanks, Josh. So yeah, you, thank I, you, man. I saw that. You never heard that line, if you want to make friends, go to summer camp. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's, <laughs> that's, I feel like that, that sounds like something Ted Chris, Christopher yeah. would have said. Yeah. So. He was a very, very close friend of mine. And uh, really, yeah, he just, uh, and you know what? He's an example of, he, he had the talent, but he never got the chance. Yeah. You know, and, and cause he it's was hard. Old. I think, yeah. you know, I mean, it's just hard. It's, it's a totally, I mean, really that's why my deal was almost, I'm not going to say, I mean, almost my deal was kind of, I mean, really was unexpected. I think that I never really saw that coming because if there's a fine line between, you know, you, you go through a part of your career thinking that you, you need that opportunity or trying to find that opportunity and, and you carry a, like, I mean, we talked about this on Dale's podcast, like yeah. you carry the frustration of not, of not, of knowing that you're good enough and you don't have that opportunity. And, you know, there was a time in my career that maybe I carried that frustration too much. And then really over the past couple of years, I kind of said, you know, I've kind of, felt like my life had changed in a way that, you know, really my, I was going to be a career short track racer and I, and I was okay with that. Um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of great drive, you know, there's, I mean, there's tons The list goes on and on and on and on of great, great short track racers that made it, made a career out of racing these places around here. And, and I kind of felt like that was um, going to be my path. And, you know, now I get this other opportunity, it kind of, like I said, it was surprising, but really, um, I'm really trying not to do anything different than I've been doing over the last three or four years. You know, I'm still working on late model cars and still want to race them. And, you know, just instead of Saturdays, I'm going to be going to Xfinity race instead of a, a race at Hickory or something. So I don't know. I'm just really trying to keep not, not put too much um, emphasis on it and just try to race like I've been racing. And hopefully that brings the most success. Well, I'm sure it will. Listen, I, I'm, I don't know if you know my background, you know, my family owns Stafford Speedway. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, this is what I grew up doing before I spent 40 years at ESPN and ABC. And right. I, that's my goal with this is each and every week to feature people in the short track industry. Some of them that get a shot, Josh, but there's an awful lot of them that are just incredibly talented, as you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, and they don't, and it's, it, you're right about NASCAR, but I do think that they're attempting, they're trying uh, to, to make that connection again. And I mm -hmm. think it's critical. It's, or, or we're going to have, we're going to have a lot more, uh, you know, uh, potential, uh, lost speedways for Dale to go traipsing through the woods finding. Yeah. You know, Hey, I won't keep you. I do appreciate yep. it. And thank you for letting me, um, you know, interrupt it for a minute. <laughs> oh, you're good, man. It's Between all good. the dogs it's and the car. For sure. All right. Give my best. All right, man. I'll see you. Thanks.